outdoor mammals. So about 1,400 species, bat species worldwide, and so that's 22% of uh, mammals worldwide. So more bat, more mammals hang upside down than have boobs. So we're talking about a very big group. Um, and uh, they have today a basically a, a, almost a total global um, distribution, um, and they range in size from you know very large uh, flying foxes like this guy to tiny little bats like this. So it's quite a big <coughs> group, very diverse. Um, the fossil record is not so great for bats. So um, we know something about the early record for bats, and that's uh, and a couple of the um, examples here, there's a textbook celebrities these days. Um, Onychomicturus is, is about um, uh, 52 million years old and some of these are about 49 million years old. So very good examples uh, of um, some beautiful early fossil bats. But the record after that is actually very poor in compared to other mammals. Um, so about between 66 and 81% of the record is estimated to be missing. Um, so it's quite significant. One of the things that we don't understand about bat evolution is how these early bats um, are related to other mammals, how they're related to each other, and how they're related to modern bats. So there are lots of grey areas, so any record for a bat is a good record. Um, and the bats I'm going to be talking about today, the fossils, um, come from the Paris Basin in France, um, from a site called Premontre here, uh, which is near the town of Lone, um, right up here, um, and this colour represents the Paris Basin. So a lot of the sediments there are um, Eocene or and Paleocene. So that's where we're talking about. Um, these fossils have an interesting history. They were actually excavated from a site within the old Premontre Abbey, and the Premontre Abbey actually dates back to the 11th or 12th century, um, but there are some of the buildings that are about 17th, 18th century. Um, and it was when they were doing building works um, on some of the 18th century um, buildings um, that these uh, fossil bats turned up, or these fossils turned up. I should say now, Premontre, this is the abbey here, it's used today, it's still, um, this is a modern picture of it, obviously. Um, and it's used as a psychiatric hospital today, but it's a very well-known um, <coughs> abbey. Um, the fossils that were collected, um, as I said, they were collected when there were building works that were done. Um, they were discovered in about 1980, and the site remained accessible to about the uh, early 1990s. And during that time, there is um, the society of, um, this is a group of paleontologists from that area, and they are a mixture of professional and amateur um, paleontologists who actually excavated the site and thankfully um, have uh, allowed us to be looking at these uh, these bats, um, or the fossils in general, actually. Um, so this is an aerial photo of the area. So this is the abbey here, and this is where the building works were uh, going to occur. Um, with the acid star here. Um, what they found is an 18 metre section of early Eocene sediment, so fantastic, not, not unusual in the Paris Basin, but fantastic to have them exposed like this. Um, and the mammal fossils um, that I'm talking about today um, actually come from a five metre section down here, um, and this is a sandy kind of clay uh, sediments. So this is what the um, overall um, fauna looks like. So um, as you can see, lots of different groups. So everything from plants and vertebrates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and so on. Um, and the mammals are quite rich. The, the groups here shown with a dagger are ones that are totally extinct today. So it's a nice mix of very uh, extinct archaic type mammals as well as um, modern groups like primates, rodents, bats, and so on. Um, but it's about 50-50 split. Um, and the age of the deposit is uh, around here, so it's MP10, uh, which, which is uh, basically it's uh, correlated um, with that type of um, age across uh, mammal fauna. So it's been correlated by the base, on the basis of the sediments and the fauna. Um, and, oh, sorry, oh, we'll move on. Um, 
So yeah, so about 15 million years old. It's quite reasonably well dated, reasonably well constrained. So um, these are some of the bats that have come from the deposit. Mostly they're fragmented, but as I mentioned, any record for a bat is a good record. Um, and there's about, I think, we're thinking about nine species represented so far. Some of them uh, we have described and some are yet to be described. A uh, lot of lower teeth, not so many upper specimens, but and they're isolated. So, yeah, actually associating them is um, taking some time. Okay, so um, what we've got, what we seem to have a mix among the bats, perhaps not surprisingly, is a whole bunch of archaic types and also the beginnings of modern bats. So it's a really great um, deposit and a really great mix of fauna that we don't usually see. Um, so that's very nice. So, um, so one of the things, sorry, one of the things that we can, uh, one, one of the easiest ways of telling some of these archaic bats uh, from modern bats apart is that the archaic bats tend to have a full suite of lower teeth. So they have like the maximum number of teeth that you can get in a bat. Um, and so generally we don't see that in modern, modern bats, but sometimes you do, but generally not. Um, and uh, so we, uh, so this is the kind of formula that we're seeing in these extinct archaic um, taxa like this and like our beautiful orange connectors here. Um, and certainly we are seeing though that kind of pattern in the pre montra bats. So, um, and we're getting some of those archaic groups. So we've um, described a new species uh, and genera, gen sorry, genus of, um, of these archaic bats. They tend to have a very specific kind of uh, pattern in their lower molars, which I won't go into too much. Um, and this is a group that is pretty well known actually from uh, uh, Europe before, um, and also India. Um, so we're getting those kinds of archaic ones, but we're also getting these, um, the beginnings of modern bats actually in this deposit. So this is another one that we described with a different kind of pattern in the, uh, in the lower molars. This is called myelogenite, again, not, not to worry. Um, but we're also getting a reduction in the number of roots and things like that you know, that are giving us a signal of what that we're, we're into modern bats in some of these groups. Um, these are, this is what we've found so far in the um, pre montra assembly. So we're down here at 50 million years ago. Um, so we're getting um, some of the Eocene, the typical Eocene fossil bats here, um, as well as at least one group of these modern bats with the Vespertilion audia. Um, this group today is um, the most common and widespread group of uh, bats to, today. So they virtually have a cosmopolitan distribution. There are about 400 species of that 1,400, so really big group. They've gone everywhere. Um, they're an incredibly successful group. Um, that's the first one we picked up in, these, um, in this whole deposit. Um, and just putting that into perspective, here we are. This is the group um, that we, we've um, found it was representative of this really early bat, sorry, of this early one bat is down here. The next <laughs> oldest record was back up here. So we pushed the record back about 22 million years. So it's quite a significant um, change in, in, the, in the way we understand um, fossil record of these groups. Um, and as you can see, this, this is the extinct families of bats. They, the oldest ones are about 55 million. They peg out at about 38 million, um, and the, the, you'll see that there's quite an overlap um, with modern groups. These ones are mostly North African, um, but this is the first uh, record um, in Europe of this group, um, and of, of any. Oh, sorry, this is the first record of this group, and it happens to be in Europe, which is interesting in terms of where the origins of some of these may be. Um, okay. Troy was talking a little bit before about um, how warm things were in the Miocene. Well, in the Eocene, as he also mentioned, it was very hot, very hot indeed. Um, and where this deposit uh, lies is sort of in the um, early Eocene climate optimum, so it was extremely warm um, and wet. 
it's a time when early bats seem to have um, spread. So they've, they've uh, once they've evolved, they have gone, uh, they've distributed um, all over the place. So as you, these are these represent um, uh, just just the distribution of these early ESN bats. So they got virtually everywhere, including to Australia. And this is one of our Australian early ESN bats. Um, so quite quite successful during this time. It was a good time for bats to be born. Um, this is what we understand the actual pre mantra um, deposit to be like. Um, so what we're getting, so this is a time um, when it was very warm, sea levels were very high, so in Europe, uh, and particularly Western Europe, it was a, just a series of islands at that time um, with the sea levels so high. Um, and where pre mantra is, is up here, so it's actually in a littoral zone, so there were periods when it was flooding and not flooding, um, and that's actually been incredibly useful because what it means is that we have marine sediments um, interbedded or be between the beds of the, um, the sediments that uh, contain the mammals and the other fauna, um, and it makes it great to actually correlate with the rest of um, the uh, sediments in that area and outside it. Um, and also, we have a lot of um, shark teeth and so on, which are really, again, really great for um, correlation purposes. What we're seeing is that the most common animals, or the most abundant animals in the deposit, are primates, rodents, um, some pantalestids, which are um, an extinct group, and the bats. Um, and they're rare, they're not, there are some large mammals, but not many. And it suggests, um, when you actually put all the information together, including the sediments, that it was quite a dense, uh, what we call paratropical forest. So not a tropical forest like you find today, but the equivalent of that, a type of forest, um, in terms of um, uh, lots of aspects of, of the, um, the type of plants and so on there, um, including palms, broad-leafed um, uh, broad species and so on. Um, so, and this paratropical forest actually in, in this early warm wet time uh, spread right up to towards the pole. So we extended all over the globe. So it was, um, a, 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 as I said, a very warm time. Um, we think that, so what we're suggesting is that it was dense paratropical forest, um, but obviously near a pool or an estuary. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to thank these people, obviously AAP for um, putting on the symposium, um, obviously Troy, which we'll put thank you later on, uh, Pangea Research Centre, Australian Research Council, and particularly the um, SLP, because without that group, without that um, society that, that supports paleontological endeavours, um, this fauna would never have materialised. Um, they were extremely important, they were um, very active at the time and they saved um, certainly this morning and uh, and I think ultimately we'll have a you know, fantastic contribution to um, paleontology in general. Thank you. So the, was it the best material on the students? Yep. The, the family of bats that you blackpaded over 20 years. Yep. Um, so how does that now Contradicts, or how does that contrast with what the molecular divergence states are saying? Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. So, yeah, so what is so all the molecular data? Sorry, I did have a slide, but I took it out, so I thought it would be too long. Um, but so, all the molecular um, estimates of the divergence of that family from other bat families um, range from uh, 52, I think it is, to um, about 30. Um, the younger ones um, have been discarded recently, um, and so most of the more recent ones based just on molecular data are around uh, 55 to, and it was 38 because that's what the oldest, um, before this, the oldest um, fossil was about 38, so that was left in the mix. But, um, so it's pretty well spot on, actually. Um, and the good thing about this fact, and we've published that we've published now is that it's a perfect, or well, it's, it's, a, it's a great calibration point for molecular phylogenies for not just that group, but also bats, because we were missing a lot of those early ones. Just for a second kind of question. So I, I noticed on the biology that you said that it was uh, one of the more um, derived families of that. Is that going to have any pushback effect on 
any of the other families and facts are less developed, less developed alive. So, um, in terms of linking them with the archaic ones, or? Yeah, well, within like the extant lineage of facts, yep. um, is it going to have an effect on the prediction of divergence from the other families? Um, not so much. Um, there, are, there are some in North Africa that belong to some of those other <laughs> super families. Um, and they look, they are certainly um, yeah, causing a lot of rethink, um, and particularly about where modern bats might have originated. So um, the thinking now has, is probably that it's North Africa or around North Africa. Um, but uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, the record is still so spotty as we have to say. So, but but certainly for some of these modern, you know, the, the best to be honest. It, it moves that focus of North Africa back into Europe. The, uh, the, 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 the same variant for so long, from archaic bats to modern bats, is there a common dietary um, food source which extended the whole time? Well, prim primarily, uh, I mean, primarily bats are insect eating, eating, and certainly the majority of bats are insect eating, but in certain cases, there are two groups but that have kind of almost abandoned, well not abandoned, but they have embraced um, fruit and, and veg veg vegetation and so on. Um, and they've, they've had their own kind of um, amazing you know, diverse, diversification periods and times, and you can really sort of see that um, where they've just exploded in diversity, and one's actually been in the neotropics and the other one in the old world paleotropics. But in general, most bats are insect eating, um, and particularly that, that group. What we do see are differences between the modern bats and the archaic bats, um, and one of the reasons why the archaic bats might have declined is that uh, for example, things like Vespertilionids are actually able to go into torpor um, and hibernate um, and uh, migrate. And so there are, there are lots of things about them that suggest they were a bit more flexible um, in their, uh, their ability to survive in, in different areas where if conditions were unfavourable, they had lots of other tricks like, you know, in their bag of tricks that the old archaic ones may not have had because when they evolved, it was you know, this kind of standard, warm, tropical, um, you know, these, these paratropical forests. So maybe when things started to cool down, um, particularly around 35 million, when you get the Antarctic current, um, you know, circulating um, Antarctica, when the global temperature started to fall, it looks like when the more modern bats, um, you know, came into play and, and the, older, the older ones disappeared. 